In this demonstration, we'll show you how you can set up automated business rules using the Cluding Cleaning application targeted towards business data stewards. So let's start by uploading some data. In this case, I've got two files I'd like to upload, contacts and contacts add later. Let's add it into the staging environment in a folder called data. Let's take a look at the contacts first. Here we have 10 records. And you can see we've got 10 people here, Lorraine, Omar, etc. Now we've got a data quality problem here in the job field, but we can fix this a little bit later. For right now, I want to map this into the platform. Let's map this to a person. And we're going to use the person vocabulary. Why? Because it's already got a lot of the concepts that we're seeing in this data, like first names, last names, and so forth. Let's create a mapping. And let's just double check that everything looks good. First of all, I might want to change the name to use the full name. Let's detect the IDs correctly. ID and email can both be used to uniquely identify those records. OK, great. So now that we've mapped, let's process this data into the Cluedin platform. In a couple of moments, we're going to see 10 records set up, and we've submitted those records in. With those records in the platform, I'm going to head over and create a stream out of the platform. I've already set up a connection to a SQL Server database. We call them export targets. And now I'm wanting to specify what type of data I'm wanting to actually push out to that target. We're going to create a stream called person. Here, we need to specify exactly what type of data we're looking at streaming out. In this case, let's just keep it simple and set the type of data to person. Save, confirm, and we can see a preview. Here are all the users that will be pushed out. However, I'm not wanting to push out all these properties, just the job title itself. Let's head to the export configuration, specify where we're wanting to send the data to that SQL Server database, and we're going to create a table called person. Let's set this up in the synchronization mode, and let's specify what exact fields we're wanting to share with that downstream system. Here, let's search for our job, add that in, save, and let's look at the data tab just to make sure this is exactly what we're wanting to send out. Yes, we're wanting to send out the data with all the data quality problems still baked into it. Let's activate this and confirm. Now, once this data started flowing, it'll be out there in that SQL Server database. First of all, we need to fix the problems and then we need to patch them so they never happen again. So for this, let's head over to our cleaning application. We're going to create a new cleaning project called Fix the Job Titles. In this case, we want to specify what exact data we're wanting to fix. We can use the same filter we use for our stream. And it's also going to ask us for what properties we're wanting to clean as well. Just per, that's just fix that person.job field. Let's create the project and we can now generate the results. Let's confirm. Let's head over to our SQL Server database and we should be able to see a table called person, which we do. Let's select the, the top 1,000 rows. And we can see that our records are out in that target system with the data quality issue still uh, in the target as well. Now that we've generated our cleaning project, let's go off and clean the data. Let's clean up our canvas. And let's just focus on the actual problem at hand. Now I could automatically just uh, go in and uh, manually edit these in line, but I'd like a little bit more of a smarter way to do this. For this, I'm gonna ask the platform to break down all the unique values of this job. You can see it's pretty distributed. Let's click the clustering button in which Cludin will use different techniques to be able to not only detect the problem, but suggest the fix. In this case, it's telling me that all these versions of accounting can be turned into this more normalized, harmonized version. I agree, and I also agree with this software developer as well. Let's merge those, and let's continue going through some of the other techniques. They seem to have picked up another permutation of a problem and made the suggestion that both of these can be turned into the same result. Let's merge those. Let's close. Now the distribution is looking much better. Let's close off our cleaning project and process this data into the platform. You'll notice that the enable rules auto generation is ticked by default. 
If I confirm this, then we're going to see a couple of things happen. First of all, Cluden's going to fix all of those job titles in the Cluden system itself. It's also going to push those changes down to my SQL Server database so they have the fixes as well. In addition to this, if I head under the Rules tab, you'll see that's automatically created business rules off the back of this. However, they are inactive by default. So let's head over to our Rules Builder and let's activate all of these rules. These rules are very explainable. For example, let's click on this second rule that clearly says if we ever see a person.job equal to software dev, then let's set the value of that same key to software developer. This is what we instructed the system to do in our cleaning project, but now this is codified in a business rule. If we head over to our SQL Server database and run the script again, we should see that all of our clean data is out in the target as well. Okay, so how we patch this? If we head this back to our data sources, remember that contacts add later file that we had before. You can see in here that we've got 10 rows. However, we see the same types of problems happening in that job column. Let's map this data. And we can choose an existing mapping. Let's choose the contacts because it's the same data. Let's create the mapping and let's just double check if that mapping's all good for us. Great, it's automatically taken on the full name, it's detected the identifiers, and it's detected the email as well. Let's click Next, Finish, and let's process that data through the platform. Now that we've automated the business rules and they're activated, we will see not only that these records are automatically fixed in the Cludium platform, but they're automatically fixed in the downstream consumers as well. Let's go over and take a look at our rules. You can see that they're activated. Let's take a look at our new records. And we can see that anyone that had those particular problems, you can actually see it in this view as well, that actually everybody seems to have that fixed version of the data. However, there's only one that slipped through the crack, and that's because it's got an extra white space character in it. So for that, we can go back to our cleaning project, fix that, and have the business rules automated as well. For our downstream consumers, you can see that those records have all been automatically fixed, and now we've patched those particular problems from happening without having to manually build those rules ourselves.